Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest and welcome to another ASX Daily Rundown video. Time is currently 3.15 p.m. So about 55 more minutes left in trading today. And hopefully <clears throat> you did not panic on open this morning and sell out of all your shares because the market has rebounded quite awesomely. And to be honest with you, not much of a surprise because really the only reason why the American markets were down overnight is because inflation came in a little bit stronger than anticipated. When I say stronger, I'm talking about 0.1 percentage point. So expectations on CPI were, uh, was it 3.4%? It came in at 3.5%. So for that very reason, the market panicked. And on open this morning, our market panicked and it's recovered really nice. At one point this morning, the Australian XGO or the ASX 200 was down about 1.2 or maybe even 1.3%. Now it's only down at 0.37% and it continues to climb, grind higher, small caps down a little bit more. That's understandable. And interesting enough, if I had a look at my uh, three um, platforms that I trade on, so my super, superhero and self-wealth. If I just focus on superhero, and that's where I do most of my trading, have more of my small caps in that particular platform and compare the performance of that particular um, shares in that platform compared to my super, which holds most of my quality companies, there will be a stark, di stark dif difference. So a lot of the small cap companies fell on open and haven't quite recovered yet, while many of the quality companies fell on open and are recovering really nicely. So that's where the money is going in on these sort of days, uh, on the recovery part of the day anyway. Most of the money is pouring into the quality companies, the bigger companies, while the small caps linger behind. Uh, tech down 0.53% and resources up 0.92%. Uh, so pretty good day on the market, considering I think a lot of people, when the trading started at 10 a.m. this morning, thought we will be down about 1% or maybe even worse. Now, another interesting thing about today, it was much more interesting in terms of announcements than what we have been seeing over the past two days. And I have to make a decision which companies I'm going to have a look at. Now, I'm working today, so I actually did write down some of the announcements. I have not had a look at the best performing or worst performing companies. There are six Appendix 4Cs and 5Bs. I probably won't linger on some of these, but I do have to, do want to have a chat about a few of them. And then I wrote down all the announcements that I did want to talk about other than 4Cs and 5Bs. We have 10. 10 compared to uh, yesterday and Tuesday, where I was lucky to find one or two interesting announcements. So some of these announcements or some of these companies that release announcements today include Next DC. Now they're doing a capital raising. So maybe I'll skip past that company, but I still want to talk about, I want to talk about Next DC because uh, one of the reasons why they're doing capital raising is because that sector, uh, data centers is booming right now. And I think uh, they're just taking advantage of what the share price has done. And the very fact that the share price is at or near all time highs and they're in this um, uh, stage where business is just booming and they are expanding overseas. They're looking for land. That's one of the things I did see. They're looking for land overseas to expand, particularly in Southeast Asia. So I won't discuss Next DC because uh, no trading for that company today. And they're doing a couple raising. I won't talk about Finney. They've gone into a trading halt. So that's not a couple raising. That's in regards to a white label uh, from the India government. And so who knows, it could be negative, but I'm thinking it's going to be positive. I won't talk about email payments. There was some positive news for that company, uh, but the share price, I'm assuming, hasn't done much. Um, so other companies I might want to talk about include Northern Star, Avita, definitely want to talk about Avita. Also want to talk about Vulcan, uh, maybe Core Lithium. Definitely want to talk about Big Tin, Big Tin Can. And then maybe net wealth and maybe blue bet. And at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about a chart. And the reason I'm only going to discuss one chart in this video is I did make a purchase today. And that purchase was on Metarock, a decode MYE. And I'll show you why I took a position in that company today. Um, it wasn't planned. I put the order in and my order was just hit. 
I could have been waiting a few days, but it was hit today, thankfully. Anyway, so let's, we've already had a look sort of at the ASX today. So let's dive into the sectors and the indices. So energy is good, material is good, staples. Staples had a good day. So some defensiveness when you look at staples, utilities just behind staples. Uh, worst performing sector is real estate. That is sort of understandable. So when inflation comes in a little bit hotter than expected, that means the chances of interest rates falling probably decrease, and that's not good for the real estate sector. So it's not a shock to see real estate down, not a shock to see some of the REITs down today. So let's have a look at a REIT. What is a REIT ticker code? What's one REIT? Um, CLW. Let's have a look at CLW. Uh, Chart Hall Long Whale REIT uh, down 2.71%. Uh, the very first read I ever looked at was Dexas Convenience Retail, down 1.82%. Do we have to look any further? Probably not. So real estate's had a bad day today, which um, is to be expected. IT down, discretionary down, financials down as well. And then if we, as we have a look at the sectors or the indices, gold up, resources up. So hopefully you're in some mining companies. I am. And um, hopefully all my mining companies had a good day today. And the worst performing sector, banks down almost 1.1%. Uh, and let's have a look at other sectors. Yeah, mostly mining here. And of course, staples. And then the worst performing sector, yeah, REITs. There it is, REITs. Down 1.78%, just behind real estate, down 1.77%. And then banks. Okay. That's probably all I want to talk about in terms of uh, what happened on the ASX today. Now let's have a look at some of the announcements and we'll start off with uh, the Appendix 4Cs and 5Bs and we can filter this fairly easily. So there is, we won't look at today, we'll go back to yesterday because just after I finished recording my video, well maybe not just after, a few hours after, a company called Button, to go BTN, released their Appendix 4C. Now they released their Appendix 4C after closing, after trading had closed yesterday and they've gone into a trading halt today for some reason, and I have no idea why. So actually, let's have a look at Button. More than likely, it's I'd say it's a capital raising, but I could be completely mistaken. i am just um, said that because of probability. Most uh, capital raisings by these small companies are capital raisings. It could be because something completely different. Potential capital raising, there we go. Okay, so let's have a look at this company, Button. And I never, it, when a company like Button releases an Appendix 4C and Activity Report alongside the 4C. I very rarely open up the Activity Report unless I want to take a closer look at how the company performed and get some commentary from management. And the way I decide whether I'm going to look at Activity Report is I just open up the Appendix 4C. I go straight to the operating cash flow. And if the company is operating cash flow positive, I will have a close look. Or if they're getting close to being operating cash flow positive, so Button is not at that point or that stage right now. And then typically after I've done this, I then feel, let me show you this, what I do. I think I've already shown you, I feel in my little spreadsheet. So I can just see how the company is performing or the company's cash receipts um, are moving in the right direction, going up through time. And just based off their not year to date, nine months, flat. So nine months, receipts are 9.8 million. This quarter was 3.3 million. So just by looking at that, um, this quarter is not anything special for Button. And we can see why, possibly why the company needs to do a capital raising. Let's have a look at the cash on hand. Cash on hand is 8.6 million. So that's interesting. They have plenty of cash on hand. And section, they have quite a bit of debt. Financing facilities, 81.3 million. Uh, this is sort of a lending company. I remember if I remember correctly, uh, 13 quarters of funding left. So it's just interesting they're doing a cap raising. I thought their cash on hand would be much lower than it actually is. So I won't be doing a standalone video on a button. I think I might have done one or two in the past. And there's another company called Quest Communications released a monthly cash flow report and a quarterly cash flow report. I probably shouldn't open this one up. Uh, I actually have done a video on this company and said, is this the worst company on the ASX? Um, so they released monthly and quarterly cash flow statements. And let's have a look at the quarterly statement. No receipts, staff costs of 78,000, administration costs of 14,000, 
Um, the recovery staff costs under shared office arrangements. So why am I even bothering looking at this company? Uh, Markup of Quest is 1.49 million, while Button is 13.5 million. So let's have a look at some of the announcements today, the, the pennies four C's today. And there were a few. Started off for, and there was one 5B, started off with Biome, full activities, activities and cash flow report. And if I do a standalone video on any of these companies, they release a pennies four C today, it would be on this particular company because Biome is operating cash flow positive. And they say that straight away. Uh, first positive quarterly EBITDA in third quarter records first positive quarter of underlying operating cash flow in the third quarter, sales of 3.2 million. Now they already mentioned this in a previous announcement that was released a few days ago, maybe one day ago or two days ago. So the market should, be, should have already known this. Oh, there it is, not a few days ago. In fact, over a week ago, on the 2nd of April, they released that particular announcement. So for some reason, the market was a little bit surprised about this announcement, up 2.9%. Um, and it should have been, because we already knew this was going to happen. So possibly I will do, and this is a nice little table showing how the company's operating cash flow has improved the last four quarters. Now it's positive. And then you might laugh, because the company is operating cash flow positive by $89,000, and at free cash flow positive by the same amount. Although you could say proceeds from disposal of capital expenditure or property plan equipment, it was 18,000. And uh, so cash on hand actually decreased during the quarter uh, by $72,000. Anyway, so you might laugh at that, but it's operating cash flow positive, free cash flow positive. That's the very thing management companies should be trying to achieve and biome management have achieved it in this particular quarter. Now, the most important thing moving forward is whether they can remain being operating cash flow and free cash flow positive on an ongoing basis forever, or maybe not forever, but as long as possible. So congratulations to Biome. So let's have a look at some of the other companies that released their Appendix 4C today. I was a little bit excited about Odira, AUA. And the main reason behind that is on their title page, they did mention here net op, net Net positive operating cat positive net oh, that's just a worded terribly. Net positive operating positive cash flows underpinned by 2.1 million purchase order. Um, but down here, this is the most important point I'm underlying, which is point number six. Quarterly cash flows further bolstered by receipt of $673,000 RD tax refund. You might have heard me say this before as we go to the quarterly cash flow report. I prefer government grants and tax incentives not to be in the operating activities to be more in the uh, financing activities because that's not a part of the company's on daily ongoing um, business or ongoing daily uh, business activities. Um, and it does uh, distort how the company has performed because they've said they were operating cash flow positive, but they're not. If we take that away, uh, this company was operating cash flow negative by over $200,000, not positive, $462,000. Government grants and tax incentives um, are fairly lumpy as well. Some companies really receive those incentives all in uh, one quarter or maybe um, in two quarters. Um, we can see for the nine months, the companies only received $728,000 of government grants and tax incentives. So a little bit misleading their statements, but that's what they're supposed to do. That's what the management is supposed to do. They're supposed to spin it. Um, it's all about marketing. It's all about spin, isn't it? Mark, that's what marketing is. It's all about spin. And that's what companies management is supposed to do. And then we're supposed to really read between the lines or discover the truth from there. So initially I was excited that I read that. And then uh, I went to this part and I saw, yeah, no, I don't consider this to be an operating cash flow positive company at this point in time. Mark cap of Biome, by the way, is 73 million. A mark cap of Adira is 7.3 million. That's according to Comsec. Uh, another company that released a Penny's 4C is IODM. IODM. Not a company I know much about. However, I did read what this company does. Uh, in fact, I opened up the other Penny's 4C that we did receive today. Uh, and let's have a look which one's going to win the race. 
and it is Traffic Technologies. Okay, so Traffic Technologies is a company I do know a little bit about. Not the sort of company I would ever invest in for the long term, but net operating inflows, 1 million, net debt repayments, 1.3 million a quarter, and 4.2 million over the first nine months of financial year 24. Order book strong, outlook strong. So everything looks really good in the highlight section. Also released a trading update, revenue for the first nine months down 39%. That's not good because, of course, one of the first things I look at is whether a company's revenue and cash receipts are growing. So according to the trading update, no growth in this business. And to be honest with you, what they do is not that exciting. You can sort of see what they do just here um, somewhere. Contracts in order wins were positive in the quarter, including contracts to supply LED lighting across the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria, the supply of traffic controllers and software licenses in China, and LED traffic signaling equipment. So that's sort of what they do. They're all about traffic management, including lighting, traffic controllers. And to be honest with you, I don't find that sort of business that exciting. Uh, but, but let's have a look at this company's Appendix 4C. Receipts of customers 7.5 million. The company was operating cash flow positive by over $1 million in the quarter. And for the year to date, operating cash flow positive by $4.58 million. Uh, not only that, they were free cash flow positive as well. Um, but the interesting thing, and they repaid the debt down by $4.5 million. Not a lot of cash on hand, um, $1.2 million, but because they're operating cash flow positive, they're using that cash to pay down their debt. And that's exciting to me. So even though this company in itself is not exciting, what they're doing with the cash they're creating in the operations is exciting. Repay the debt. That's exactly what they should be doing. Doesn't mean I will invest in this company. Now, the other thing to note is how much debt they still have. So unused or total financing facilities, 8.5 million. So still a little bit of debt to repay at this point in time. And the interest rates on the debt is quite high. We're talking about over 10% per annum. Um, so... Interesting quarter for traffic technologies. And the most important thing about this company is the market cap. Now, you probably want to include the debt. So $8 million of debt. But this company has a market cap of $6.1 million. Yes, yeah, $6.1 million. So include the debt. We're talking about an enterprise value of $14 million. For a company that was operating cash flow positive for the first nine months of the year, about $4 million, and they've repaid or repaying their debt. So there are things to like about this company, and I'll show you the chart of all these companies in a second. Uh, before we do that, let's have a look at IODUM. Um, so I did have a look at what this company does. Uh, accounts receivables. Uh, so this company sort of sounded like Credit Clear, but I think they're slightly different than Credit Clear because of what they said in their about section. Here it is a leading accounts receivable solution that utilizes digital technology to optimize automation. Solution, their solution provides an end-to-end -end accounts receivable process that supports customers with invoicing, query management, payment reminders, escalation, analytics, and more. So maybe this company and Credit Clear should get together. Now, in saying that, this company has a fairly large uh, market, over $100 million. So let's have a look at the pennies 4C. Is it, is it exciting for me? Is exciting enough for me to do a standalone video on? No. $640,000 of cash receipts, uh, operating cash flow negative $745,000 for the nine months today. Nice growth. Looks like there is growing receipts, but it's still fairly low. Uh, but the company in the first nine months of the year, uh, receipts are $1.5 million and operating cash flow negative by $1.6 million. So straight away, I probably won't do a video on this company. And the other thing is uh, the markup is quite high at over $100 million. Okay, so let's have a look at the charts of all these companies. Now, there was one at Penny's 5B company called Legend Mining, operating cash flow, um, no, no receipts. So I'm not even going to look at that company, Legend Mining. So let's have a look at the charts of these five, five at Penny's 4C companies. Button. And what I'm looking for here is any exciting happenings. No. Well, straight away, no for Button. Not exciting at all. Uh, next one was Bio. This is probably the most exciting um, chart out of all of these companies. Uh, share price has been a beautiful uptrend for a while. A little bit of volatility the last few months, but that's okay. Share price is still in an uptrend. 
And I still remember doing a video on this company one year ago when the share price was below 10 cents. Could have been even like eight cents. Now the share price is 35 and a half cents. I just wish I took a position back then. AUA, I have a feeling no. I think the share price is in the downtrend. Yep, still in downtrend. Some interest in this company on the 27th of February. Uh, so that's around the time the company would have released their results, half year results. Uh, but that was like a one, we'll call it a three day interest, three day period of interest in this company. And the interest has died away uh, from there. So this chart in itself, no, at this point in time. Uh, and I owed him, I owed him. Uh, yeah, no, this definitely no. Share price in the downtrend. In fact, the share price might be at an all time low. Yeah, it looks like the share price, well, is a long-term low. Last time share price was this low was way back in 2021. So just based off the chart, no for me. And then finally, TTI. This chart I know does look pretty ugly. Yeah, this is an ugly looking chart. Share price has dropped from a high, recent high of 5.8 cents down to 0.7 cents. So, you know, based off their pennies for say, there are things to like about this company, Traffic Technologies. Chart is not one of them. Uh, the market doesn't know anything about the, or doesn't like this company at all. And I think what this company has to do is continue to repay the debt and then become operating cash flow or remain operating cash flow and free cash flow positive, and then possibly think of giving dividends back to their shareholders or maybe expand, um, um, maybe think about acquisitions. And I'll mention this again, the most important job of management of a team or a company is capital allocation decisions. And one of the decisions this company has made is the right decision, repay the debt. And then when they've repaid the debt to a good level, then they have to decide what to do with their cash flow in operations. That might, might not be for a few years uh, hence. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the announcements that were released today that I want to focus on. Uh, we'll have a look at market sensitive. There we go. So let's go all the way back. I'm seeing if there's any, there's Legend Mining, released their Appendix 5B at 148 p.m. So we might have a look at that. Let's go all the way back to the start of the day. So there's Next DC, uh, went into a trading halt almost straight away, and that's the cap, uh, capital raising. So I won't talk about that particular raising. Uh, Northern Star operational update. Now, there were a few negative things in this, in my opinion. A um, few negative things, a few positive things. So it looks like uh, the costs are a little bit higher than expected because of some weather issues. I'm pretty sure, sure they mentioned some weather issues, uh, but there are also some positive things here as well. So the most interesting thing about Northern Star was how the market was going to react up. So actually the market liked it. And that's sort of understandable. Uh, gold's, or gold's had a good day as well. So gold must have rallied overnight, I'm assuming. Uh, so let's have a look at gold. Not really. Anyway, so Northern Star, um, potentially one of the best poorly gold companies on the ASX, one of the biggest gold companies on the ASX. Uh, and it looks like initially the market didn't like it. So that's interesting. So if you have a look at the five minute chart here, oh yeah, the share price opened well down and an immediate reaction from the market, positive reaction. This is another occasion where don't react immediately to an announcement because sometimes you might um, be on the wrong end. So someone sold out of Northern Star at $14.65. Share price is now $15.35. So initially a bad reaction and then turned into a good reaction. Sort of my whole feeling when I read this particular announcement was there were some bad things and some good things about it. So I'm not, not surprised to see the market react like it did. Uh, what else do I want to see here? Oh, Avita Medical. Avita Medical, yeah. So this is definitely going to be a bad reaction from the market. Um, so Avita Medical updates expected first quarter 2024 revenue. Now, mind you, I did read through these fairly quickly. Every two hours, I'm supposed to, supposed to take a 10-minute break. It's in our new EA. Well, did I mention I'm working today? This is my lunch break. Maybe I should have mentioned that. So during my lunch break, not my lunch break, during my 10-minute break, so I did have a quick look at some of these announcements. This did sound negative because it was a downgrade, if I remember correctly. Uh, so they did mention reaffirmed expectations for full year revenue at the lower end of the previously provided guidance. So that's not a downgrade, but for the quarter, 
Aveda Medical now expects commercial revenue to be in the range of 11 to 11.3 million, which was below the previous level, which was between 14.8 and 15.6 million. So this was a downgrade. So I fully expect share price of Aveda to be down, down 10.22%, just as I expected. So let's have a look at the Aveda Medical share price or chart. And this company is highly volatile. Um, so that's a five minute chart. And the low on the day was again in the first 30 minutes of trading, not surprising. So you can see a lot of volatility in the share price of this company. Generally in an uptrend from the end of 2022, share price at that point was below $2, got as low as about $1.50 it looks like. And you can see share price went to as high as $6.20 um, in August of last year, down again to $2.80 in October, November and rallied again. And now it looks like it's on a bit of a, a negative sentiment, a downtrend. Uh, but how further, how much, how much further Veda, share, Veda medical share price has to fall from here? Don't know. Um, so a lot of volatility in this company. I think one of the reasons behind that is the market's fairly high, and the company keeps issuing good, good announcements and bad announcements. Good announcements. Still remember back in early 2023, uh, the company released um, some really bullish, a really bullish announcement, and that's why the share price absolutely took off. Um, I forget what the bullishness was on, but it just read really bullishness. Uh, so it sort of worked for a while, but not working anymore. Okay, so that's a Vita Medical. And then we had Biome. They also, if you want to read more about Biome, they actually did also release an investor presentation today, 40 pages long. Uh, and then Button went into the training hold at 8.29 a.m. to do a couple of raising. And then Net Wealth, quarterly business update. I actually have not had a look at this one. So I'm assuming funds under management are up, increased by 6.7 billion. Nice increase in funds under management. Net inflows of 2.7 billion. Positive market movement of 4 billion. Uh, inflows of 5.2 billion for the quarter. 40% 40 40 higher than previous corresponding period. Inflows of 2.7 or net inflows of 2.7 billion. 62.2% higher. So everything looks really good for net wealth, but the valuation of this company is really high. So did these numbers impress the market? And I don't know. No, down 5.33%. So it all read really good, but sometimes you just don't know how the market's going to respond. And the share price of this company has been in a massive tear recently. So share price increased from below $12.50, almost $12.00, in October last year to 21.50, so almost doubled in about four months. This company has a market cap of five billion dollars and a P ratio of about 65, according to Trading View. So beautiful uptrend, and so unlike Northern Star, initially the market liked this announcement just by looking at the one-day candlestick. So yeah, the share price actually opened up. Share price opened at 20 dollars and 65 cents. Um, so opened up and then there was immediate selling. So again, don't overreact. And look at the bounce we've just seen. This is the five minute chart. So last 25 minutes from about 3 p.m., uh, the share price of net wealth has bounced from 1880 up to $19.30. Let's have a look. That's delayed by 20 minutes, by the way. So let's have a look at net wealth current share price, 1924.50. So it looks like uh, the decrease in share price has sort of leveled off. Anyway, so interesting chart for net wealth. That's probably had a negative effect on Hub. I do own Hub as well. Sometimes you see one company release something positive and has a positive effect on the other company. So I expect Hub24 to be down. Yeah, down only 2.8%. But share price of that company is still in a beautiful uptrend. Uh, next company I want to look at is Vulcan. Nothing to do with Star Trek. Uh, Vulcan Energy, first lithium chloride produced from optimization plant. Didn't need to open this announcement up to know more than likely the market is going to react positively. Now the market has um, liked Vulcan in the past month or two. Have a look at the chart in a second. So let's just have a look to see how the market's reacted. Up 23.4%. Not completely surprised because of their positive sentiment in this company right now. Uh, not completely surprised by that, even though I have not looked at the announcement itself but there in fact they said first lithium chloride produced that's the exciting thing for shareholders of this company so let's have a look at the chart for Vulcan 
And could this be a breakout? Yeah, a lot of volatility. Now I remember this chart. A lot of volatility in the share price. Uh, for some reason, the share price rose significantly the other day, up 13.5%. Or well, yesterday, that's yesterday. Yeah, the 10th. Uh, loose lips? Might be, but the share price did move towards um, the short-term moving average channel. So it sort of lifted off that. Uh, high volume today. Wouldn't necessarily say this is a breakout. Um, if we didn't see that rally in the share price back in the middle of March, I might consider this to be a breakout. Uh, so interesting times for a Vulcan Energy. I wonder if, wonder if Lion Town Resources has uh, gone up today. No, no. The reason I say that is because I'll get to call lithium in a second. In fact, I'll get to it now. If I can find the announcement. Uh, Findy Trading Halt. Um, email payment, settlement of PFS group acquisition liabilities, image resources, response to ASX aware query. I'm thinking about buying that share price flat, which is good. That's what I want to see with uh, image resources. In fact, I might show you the chart for that company and show you why I am interested in image resources. I might have showed you that yesterday. Where's Core Lithium? There it is. So Core Lithium Finis mineral resource increased by 58%. I'm assuming that the share price has lifted on that. Well, not much, 3.23%. So still a fair bit of negative sentiment in um, Core Lithium right now. Uh, so let's have a look at the chart for Core Lithium since I had a look at uh, Lion Town. Yeah, still negative. There's no reason to get excited about Core Lithium just yet. Uh, share price going sideways. That could be interesting in itself, but we have seen periods of time when the share price of this company goes sideways. We need to see lithium prices lift for me to get excited about core lithium. Um, and let's have a look at Lion Town Resources because I've already mentioned that. And there is potential this chart is or potentially could be looking exciting if I see the share price get above right there. So we're talking about dollar and forty cents. If I see the share price get above dollar forty cents, I could be excited about Lion Town Resources. Uh, Bluebet. I'll just mention Bluebet, right? Actually, no, 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 no. I will talk a little bit about Bluebet. So they have announced a merger with BETR. I have no idea who that is, plus a $20 million equity raising. So in itself, that's not exciting. But then I noticed BBT. And then Betmakers released something about amendment of BTR agreement. But then BT, BBT release our response to price query. It's like, what's happening here? There's no trading happening. And then when you look at BBT, trade history, the share price of this company has been on an absolute tear the last four or so trading days. Share price has increased from 21 cents to 30 cents. So we're talking about almost a 50% increase in share price over a short period of time. Sort of an increase in volume as well. Loose lips, this is the definition of someone knowing this merger was going to happen and then taking advantage of that. I really wished ASIC would pay more attention to these things happening when a company share price rises like this just before an important announcement. Because I have no doubt uh, there is some dodgy things happening. You see this time and time again on the ASX. It happens all the time. You can't say me this is a coincidence. Share price of this company rose 20% yesterday. 13.6% uh, on Monday, and then they released this announcement. There's, it's not a coincidence. ASIC, or ASX, ASIC, whatever, whoever deals with this, do your job. Yeah. Now, yeah, look at the chart actually looks really, really interesting. So share price going sideways, and then all of a sudden share price lifted off yesterday on high volume. Look at the volume compared to previous days. There was that spike in volume in early January, and then this spike in volume. Uh, potential potential breakout for Blue Bet. Final company I want to talk about is Big Tin Can. I don't think there's anything else I want to talk about here. No. Big Tin Can released, if I can find it. Here it is. Third quarter, financial year 24 business update. Share price up 12.9%. It was up a little bit more than that. This is really interesting trading because the share price opened flat on the day. And I actually saw it. I went, 
this is actually a pretty good announcement for the company. Share price opened up at 15.5 cents. And then it rallied in the first hour after share price opened. So why am I a little bit bullish about this company or this announcement? It was, was actually a good announcement. And I am fairly cynical about this company. Um, I, but I do have a problem. So they're talking about EBITDA and free cash flow. Now, EBITDA is the wrong metric for this company to be using because they capitalize research and development and they are pretty big costs. And when you capitalize research and develop, that means appreciation and amortization are fairly high on an ongoing basis. So they could be EBITDA positive by a fairly good amount, but be unprofitable and loss-making by a big amount. But they seem to love EBITDA. Uh, but in saying all that, when you compare that third quarter EBITDA, 4.2 million, that is more than likely greater than the capitalized research and development. Also, free cash flow, I thought, yeah, but that's not taking into account capitalize research and development. And I think it might be taking that into account. The reason I say that, they mentioned here free cash flow of 4.8 million and on track to achieve second half financial year 24 outlook of free cash flow of 5 million, definitely on track for that. But they mentioned here somewhere with cash on hand. This paragraph here is really important. I'll just zoom in here. The third paragraph in the EBITDA and free cash flow section made me think this is, this is a really good quarter for the company. So Big Tin Can ended the quarter with $21.6 million in cash and cash equivalents, up from $19.4 million. So cash on hand actually grew. So this makes me think this free cash flow includes capitalized research and development. And this also includes the impacts of, this is a negative impact of $2.2 million deferred consideration related to an acquisition and debt finance issues costs of $450,000, which they probably should include, by the way. But even if you include that, the company was still um, free cash flow positive by, yeah, over $4 million. I'd say $4.4 million. This could be the turnaround for Big Tin Can. Now, this company doesn't release a pennies four Cs anymore. They used to, but not anymore because they were operating cash flow positive four quarters in a row even though they get to operating cash flow positive by capitalizing research and development. And research and development could be like 3 to $4 million every quarter. And that can be deceptive. They were still burning through a lot of cash. In fact, I'm going to show you. I am going to show you right now, uh, Big Tin Can, how they deal with research and development. Uh, we can either go to one of the older Appendix 4 Cs. Yeah, let's do that. Because I'm pretty sure they're here somewhere. Here we go. Here it is. So this is October 2022. And hopefully they're operating cash flow positive. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Here it he is. Uh, hopefully they were operating cash flow positive in this particular quarter. I think they could have been because this is one of the last quarters they did report um, on. So let's have a look-see. Yeah, they were operating cash flow positive. So you might have looked at this and went, oh, Big Tin Can is operating cash flow positive by 254000 Go, go Big Tin Can. But if you go to the investing activities, you'll notice there's intellectual property here. That's capitalized research and development, $3.5 million. In fact, let's have a look at the most recent half year. And you might be able to see it better in that half year. Half year. I was just making sure I was recording. I I thought I forgot to record, which would have been very embarrassing. No, it would have been because you wouldn't have heard me say that. So let's go to the cash flow report. So they were operating cash flow negative in the first half by $6.1 million, which would have been concerning if I was following this company much at all. And capitalized development costs. They actually spell it out in the half year um, statements. $6.8 million. Uh, so this company was actually free cash flow negative by over $12 million, maybe even $13 million in the first half year. So that's why I'm a little bit excited about Big Tin Can just based off the third quarter. Possibly this company has turned things around and that could be exciting. However, the chart still look pretty ugly. The market doesn't like this company at all. The chart still looks pretty ugly. If I saw the share price 4 to 14 cents, that seems like it might be low for the company. Just there, that could be exciting. Share price is still in the downtrend. 
Uh, nice volume coming in today, but we saw this really good volume coming in on the 26th of February. That must have been in regards to their results. No, it was a notification of their results. That's interesting in itself. Uh, share price on that day did rally by 26%, and then the next day fell. So you can see, and that was on, actually, it wasn't big volume. The big volume came on the day they released the results and share price was down 4%. Um, so not re no reason to get really excited yet in Big Ten can. This is the first signs of a turnaround for this company, just the numbers they have provided uh, us in this particular video. Okay, let's have a look at some charts. Uh, and I'll have a look at, have a look at the, the company I bought today, some Metal Rock. Uh, and this is a small company, Markup, $60 million. Uh, but we can see the share price was going sideways for a long period of time. Then we saw a small little bit of an uplift in share price uh, during the start of 2024. Then they released an announcement on the 18th of March. Uh, they sold something and they're getting a fair bit of cash back. So this company is going to have a lot of cash on hand. In fact, they might have just as much cash on hand as the market with the company. That might not be true. And then share price is going sideways after that. I do like that signal. Now, I wish the share price didn't get to as high as 25 cents on the 18th of March. I just wish it stayed around about 20, 21, 20 and a half cents. That would have been a better signal. But just what the chart is showing me here, not a lot of selling coming in. So I think we have seen a bottom. I don't expect the share price to go below, below 20 cents. If it does, that would be disappointing. And that would be a stop loss for me if I did see go below 20 cents on strength. Uh, but I do like just the way the chart is playing out for Meta Rock. So I have taken out a trading position in this company. And I think the upside for Metarock could be 100% here or maybe even 200% potentially moving forward. Uh, Wagner, I'm still paying attention to Wagner. I'm pretty sure I released a video on Wagner. I recall that video like a week ago and then I think I released it today. This chart is starting to look interesting as well, going sideways. I'm waiting for a breakout. And I do think there is an argument to say Wagner's is cheap. But the other one was IMA, which is image resources. This is fairly similar to Metarock. So we can see an uplift in share price. And the last three trading days, share price is going sideways. Some good volume coming in as well. I really like this signal. When you see the share price rise in one day, in fact, it was over a few days, and the share price just goes sideways, like we're seeing here. That tells me there's no selling. Or another way to say it, uh, selling is not overwhelming supply. Yeah, uh, supply of shares on the market is not overwhelming demand. If we were seeing that, the share price would have dropped down probably to below $0.08, cents, maybe even as low as $0.7.57. Cents. We're not seeing that. There's enough demand to meet the supply. So at this point in time, I wouldn't say it's a fight between the bears and the bulls, but at this point in time, what the market is doing, uh, maybe you could say the bulls are doing their testing to see if there's any more supply of shares in the market. And the market's saying, no, we don't want to sell out of our shares and image resources right now. Things are moving in the right direction. For this company. So this is another potential trading position for me at around about nine cents. I was going to put in a bid at nine cents. What's the share price now? It's nine cents. Hasn't moved today. Got as high as 9.2, as low as 8.9. So another company I'm thinking about taking a position, Image Resources. That's all I got for the video today. I'm just going to have a quick look at what the market has done since the last time I spoke. Uh, down 0.4%. So Looks like uh, still dropping a little bit since last time I spoke, but not by a lot. Market closing in two minutes. So I've spoken enough. That's all I got for this video. I have to go back to my shift. I have to have a shower as well. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section of this video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you do need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who's qualified and can fit your own financial needs. That's it for this video. Have a good day. Bye.